In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Dear brothers and sisters, you are all most welcome to this wedding of Alana and Billy on this most magnificent spring day in Chicago. Of course, Alana and Billy, the church shares your joy. It warmly welcomes you here this afternoon. And together with your family and friends, in the presence of God our Father, we recognize, we witness that you establish between yourselves a lifelong partnership. May the Lord hear you on this, your most joyful day. May he send you help from heaven and protect you. May he grant you your heart's desires and fulfill every one of your prayers. Let us pray. O oh God, who in creating the human race willed that man and wife should be one, join Billy and Alana in a bond of inseparable love. May they always remain united in the covenant of marriage, so that as you make their love fruitful, they may become, by your grace, witnesses to charity itself. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to be seated now and we listen to Steve proclaim the first reading for us. A reading from the Song of Songs. Hark, my lover, here he comes, springing across the mountains, leaping across the hills. My lover is like a gazelle or a young stag, gazing through the windows, peering through the lattices. My lover speaks. He says to me, arise, my beloved, my dove, my beautiful one, and come. Oh, my dove, in the clefts of the rocks, in the secret recesses of the cliff, let me see you. Let me hear your voice. For your voice is sweet, and you are lovely. My lover belongs to me, and I to him. He says to me, Set me as a seal on your heart, as a seal on your arm. For stern as death is love, relentless as the netherworld is devotion. Its flames are a blazing fire. Deep waters cannot quench love, nor floods sweep it away. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is of God. Everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. Whoever is without love does not know God, for God is love. In this way, the love of God was revealed to us. God sent his only begotten Son into the world so that we might have life through him. This is love. Not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as expiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also must love one another. No one has ever seen God, yet if we love one another, God remains in us, and his love is brought to perfection in us. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. Everyone who listens to these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and buffeted the house. But it did not collapse. It had been set solidly on rock. And everyone who listens to these words of mine but does not act on them will be like a fool who built his house on sand. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and buffeted the house, and it collapsed and was completely ruined. When Jesus finished these words, the crowds were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, not as their scribes. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Dear friends, I arrived in Chicago from Durban, South Africa, in the midst of that really cold spell that you had in mid-January. And so I went from, um, well, I had effectively a 99 degree change in temperature. I had left Durban, obviously, in a hot, on a hot summer's day, and the next day I arrived here and it was 
freezing cold. So I appreciate, just like most Chicagoans, this wonderful day. It is truly beautiful. It is really spring-like. And so that first reading from the Song of Songs fits so wonderfully. The deer bounding over the hills. One can almost see it and picture it on a day like this. Spring, that first reading, all linked very nicely to a wedding. It's so wonderful, the potential, the hope, the beauty that is in a spring day and also in a wedding. There is a sense of newness, of potential, of possibility. And that is celebrated at every wedding and it is celebrated by millions of people around the city as they look out of the window or stroll along in Lincoln Park. There is a potential, there is a hope. My dear Billy and Alana, that hope, that potential is yours today. And you have your family and friends, nearly an entire church full of hope, of potential, of love. Love speaks to us of hope and possibility. Love has the power to create, to recreate, and to magnify the beauty and the joy that is around us and within us. And so I hope that you feel this joy, this hope, this potential. I hope you are able to just wrap yourselves in this love and joy that is here in this place, in this city today. Unfortunately, we know that there are also winter days all days that come along, huh? That's the cycle of every seasonal year. It is the cycle of life. There will be times of darkness and frustration and despair and anger, of loneliness. Those will come, of course. Ask anybody who's been married for any length of time in this church with us today. Those are inevitable, just as the spring day will turn to summer and to fall and to winter. And so, how do we, how do you, how do you protect yourselves in those difficult, hard times? Of course, we know nature does it so beautifully and so wonderfully. Animals hibernate, they store food, they do all sorts of things. They migrate. We too, as seasons of life change, so too must we be prepared. We must take action to store up this love, this hope, this potential that is here today for those difficult times. That is being wise, as our gospel spoke about this afternoon. That is to be wise, to build your ma married life, your marriage, to build it together on rock, to be prepared, to look ahead that it won't always be sunny when he built his house, that rains and wind and floods will come. And so he was wise. He built his house on rock. The peace, the joy, the potential, the hope that you see here, that you feel here, that you're wrapping yourselves in today, that's the rock. That's the rock for the difficult, tough times. How do we keep 
grounded and solid. How do you do that? By remembering this day, this moment, the potential, the power, the possibility, by remembering it, recalling it. Don't let any anniversary of this day pass by without remembering the hope and the potential here. But of course, it's more than just this. For us as Catholic Christians, the true rock, the real foundation is Christ himself. It is Christ that is love, that is hope, that is potential, that is power. It is Christ himself. And so the more you root your marriage, your life, your building a partnership, the more you root that in Christ, the wiser you will be, the more prepared you will be. It won't make the winds and the tough times any less tough, but they make them manageable. With Christ, we steer a path. Whether we are married, whether we are priests, whether we are single, it is Christ who gives us direction. It is Christ who reminds us of our potential. It is Christ that renews our hope. It is Christ that fills us with his love. And so I invite you now to stand and to commit yourselves to Christ, to commit yourselves to building on rock. Commit yourselves to remembering this moment of hope and potential and love. I invite you to stand. Dearly beloved, you have come together into the house of the church so that in the presence of me, the church's minister, and this community of friends and family, you can enter into marriage. May you be strengthened by the Lord. Christ abundantly blesses the love that binds you. Through a special sacrament, he enriches and strengthens those he has already consecrated by holy baptism, that they may be faithful to each other forever and assume all the responsibilities of married life. And so now, Alana and Billy, in the presence of the church, I ask you to state your intentions. Billy and Alana, have you come here to enter into marriage without coercion, freely and wholeheartedly? Are you prepared, as you follow the path of marriage, to love and honor each other for as long as you both shall live? Are you prepared to accept children lovingly from God and to bring them up according to the law of Christ and his church. And since it is your intention to enter into the covenant of holy matrimony, I ask you now to turn and face each other and to join your right hands, just your right hands, you can let your left go. Ah, very confusing, it gets them every time to join your right hands and declare your consent before God and his church. And so I ask you first, Billy, I Billy. Say those words. <laughs> Take you, Alana, to be my wife. I promise to be faithful to you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health to love you and to honor you all the days of my life. Now your turn, Alana. Say the words, eh? <laughs> I, Alana, take you, Billy, to 
Be my husband. Be my husband. I promise to be faithful to you. I promise to be faithful to you. In good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love you and to honor you. To love you and to honor you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. May the Lord in his kindness, strengthen the consent you have declared before the church and graciously bring to fulfillment his blessing within you. What God joins together, let no one put asunder. Amen. You can uh, let go of your hands if you like now. I will now bless the rings that you will give to one another as a sign of your love and fidelity. May the Lord bless these rings. May they remain always a faithful, generous sign of the love that you share for one another. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. a sign of my love and fidelity in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Billy, receive this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may kiss the bride. this in Christ. Let us all stand now and present our prayers to the Lord. As we pray to the Lord for Alana and William, on their wedding day. Let us also remember the needs of the church and the world, for the church throughout the world. May our faith in the love God has for us be expressed in our love for one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our world, may all lands that suffer violence and injustice find peace and reconciliation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our country and those who defend it, may our men and women who serve in the military be kept safe from all harm. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, lonely, or depressed, may they be strengthened by God's love and aided by friends and family. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Alana and William, may the love they pledge to each other today bring light and joy into their lives and the lives of others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all married couples, may they come to know the steadfast love of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the guests gathered here today, May they enjoy the warm company of family and friends. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all members of our families 
who have passed from this world. May they have perfect happiness and total fulfillment in eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those personal needs and thoughts which we mention now in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, who are present in our midst, as Billy and Alana seal their union, accept our prayer and fill us with your Spirit, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to be seated now as we offer our gifts to the Lord. Blessed be God forever, Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Please stand. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the offering made on the occasion of this sealing of the sacred bond of marriage. And just as your goodness is its origin, may your providence guide its course through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. You have forged the covenant of marriage as a sweet yoke of harmony and an unbreakable bond of peace, so that the chaste and fruitful love of holy matrimony may serve to increase the children you adopt as your own. By your providence and grace, O Lord, you accomplish the wonder of this twofold design, that while the birth of children brings beauty to the world, their rebirth in baptism gives increase to the church through Christ our Lord. Through him, with the angels and all the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. would you all kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, 
the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Blaise, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. you to stand now. Christ is our rock. He is our true foundation. And so let us pray in the words that he taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. My dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly pray now to the Lord that on these his servants now married in Christ, he may mercifully pour out the blessing of his grace and make of one heart in love by the sacrament of Christ's body and blood those he has joined 
by a holy covenant. O God, who by your mighty power created all things out of nothing, and when you had set in place the beginnings of the universe, formed man and woman in your own image, making the woman an inseparable helpmate to the man, that they might no longer be two, but one flesh, and taught that what you were pleased to make one must never be divided. O God, who consecrated the bond of marriage by so great a mystery, that in the wedding covenant you foreshadowed the sacrament of Christ and his church. O God, by whom woman is joined to man and the companionship they had in the beginning is endowed with the one blessing, not forfeited by original sin nor washed away by the flood. Look now with favor on these your servants, Billy and Alana, joined together in marriage, who ask to be strengthened by your blessing. Send down on them the grace of the Holy Spirit and pour your love into their hearts that they may remain faithful in the marriage covenant. May the grace of love and peace abide in your daughter, Alana, and let her always follow the example of those holy women whose praises are sung in the scriptures. May her husband, Billy, entrust his heart to her, so that acknowledging her as his equal and his joint heir to the life of grace, he may show her due honor and cherish her always with the love that Christ has for his church. And now, Lord, we implore you, may these your servants hold fast to the faith and keep your commandments. Made one in the flesh, may they be, be blameless in all they do. And with the strength that comes from the gospel, may they bear true witness to Christ before all. May they be blessed with children and prove themselves virtuous parents who live to see their children's children and grant that reaching at last together the fullness of years for which they hope they may come to the life of the blessed in the kingdom of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share with one another the joy of Christ's peace. Peace, guys. Well done. Peace be with you. Hey? Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
by the power of this sacrifice, O Lord, accompany with your loving favor what in your providence you have instituted, so as to make of one heart in love those you have already joined in this holy union and replenished with the one bread and the one chalice. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, thank you everyone for being with us to witness this joyful, hope-filled celebration. I wish you a very happy rest of the evening. I'm sure it will be a good party, eh? Huh? Good. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God the Eternal Father keep you at, of one heart in love for one another that the peace of Christ may dwell in you and abide always in your home. Amen. May you be blessed in your children, have solace in your friends, and enjoy true peace with everyone. Amen. May you be witnesses in the world to God's charity, so that the afflicted and needy who have known your kindness may one day receive you thankfully into the eternal dwelling of God. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace and joy of Christ. <laughs>